Hi guys, what I want to look at today is how our sense of, of, of who we are um, you know, affects our behaviour and how that sense of who we are, it, it's not um, as personal as, as it might seem, it's kind of, I talked in the last video about this you know, primary perception, that this is something that is kind of arises between our conditioning, how we're conditioned and how this kind of reaction to that conditioning. And that while it seems like, you know, to be who I am, it, it's just a perception that's been kind of built up almost without our, um, you know, without our choice. It's just something that's kind of arisen through, the, through this interaction. And to kind of explain more what I mean that I'm going to kind of use an example from you know my what became my primary way of seeing things and by primary perception what I mean is our usual way of seeing ourselves other people and the world in general that, that's what I mean by that and how you know my you know so one aspect of my own primary perception was this kind of real judgmental attitude um, and it kind of it kind of became very, uh, it was kind of ironic because I, I was most judgmental of judgmental people or people who I felt were, were, were judgmental. And um, there's a lovely poem by, by, by uh, Rilke, one of, one of these poets. And he wrote this, this poem called The Imaginary Career. And I just want to read a verse from it because I think it kind of really explains what kind of happened to me and, and where that kind of judgmental attitude came from. Um, so here's this poem, or it's just actually, it's a, it's a second verse from it. Defiance, the child bent becomes the bender, inflicts on others what he once went through. Loved, feared, rescuer, wrestler, victor. He takes his vengeance, blow by blow. So what that means to me is it kind of, so going back to you know, what I was saying about you know, this, this kind of very judgmental attitude that I developed, one of, you know, a lot of my memories of being a child, like some of the kind of ones that really stand out, are this sense of kind of uh, being judged. And often you know, being judged unfairly and the pain of that and, and the rage of that sense of being judged unfairly. Um, and that sense of, 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 of kind of fear of, of being judged. You know, I was, um, I was, I was quite a naive kid, I was, and I was always kind of, uh, I was what you could say easily led, I was very easily led. And when that would uh, be pointed out to me, you know, when, when I'd kind of mess up, I, I would this sense of being kind of judged and of, being, of feeling ashamed. Um, and you know that that's not such a nice feeling. But over the years, I mean, what obviously what I kind of uh, I started to do, what and it was never kind of intentionally. It wasn't like something I sat down and decided to do was to kind of direct that same, um, that that same sense of being judged onto other people. So I kind of I would judge them, you know, for not kind of living up to the standards that I kind of felt were were important. And that rage that I felt at being judged unfairly, you know, started to be kind of directed outwards towards other people. And, it, it, you know, it was, obviously I wasn't going around necessarily saying any of this, but there was real kind of rage to it and real kind of anger, this kind of sense that, you know, that the, the naughty people should be punished, they need to be punished. And this kind of, you know, real, real um, thirst for that, real thirst to see people who I thought stupid or or you know, or, or evil or whatever, you know, this sense that they needed to be punished. And of course, I mean, that all came from my own, uh, from being the victim of that. So it's like, as that, as that you know, the, as, that, as that poem says, you know, that the, the, the child bent becomes the bender, inflicts on others what he once went through. And, um, you know, th th that's what, what was kind of happening. But, when we don't see that, when we don't um, realize that, you know, this perception, rather than being something that, you know, we've carefully chosen, 
um, rather than being something that's, you know, that, that, that is just the way it is. You know, really what it is, is how, you know, we've happened to kind of react or how our, you know, how, how our psychology has kind of reacted to, to, to what's happened to us. And it's not so personal. It's not that I never sat down and decided, oh, well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to start kind of judging people and being, um, and being kind of angry at them because that's much better than, than, than feeling judged and feeling that kind of rage of being judged against myself and that kind of shame and everything that, that, that meant with that. And that was never a conversation I had as a child with myself. It was just something that, that kind of happened. And it's kind of, it's starting to see this. And it's starting to realize that this thing, this perception, my, what I call my primary perception or our primary perception, it just feels like us. It just feels, but it's really just, it's just something that's kind of developed, you know, often without any real uh, choice um, or any real kind of input. It just kind of, you know, it, it, it's something that kind of almost evolves by itself. But once that's there, you know, once we kind of believe it and we, and we give it that sense of, you know, that's who I am, it has this absolute effect on the world and, and, and we start to see the world through that lens and, and everything kind of lines up, you know, you know, it kind of becomes self-fulfilling and, and, and you know, it, it kind of, the, the perception supports itself. And it's only kind of by, by, by recognizing that there's no real, you know, there's no real I in that perception. It's just something that's kind of, that's just kind of evolved over time that we can get free of it and get free to kind of, uh, you know, escape that perception. Um, as I kind of mentioned in, in, in that last video on, uh, on, on when I was talking about primary perception and primary perception interference, that, you know, too often we're trying to, to build upon that, 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 pri that usual perception, that primary perception. And as if that primary perception was somehow a good thing that just needed some more improvement. But really, when we look at it, it's kind of, you know, it's usually, you know, deeply flawed and was kind of, you know, it, it was built, you know, like, so, like, a, a lot of it was built by a child who was just desperately trying to cope and make sense of things and, and kind of grabbing at things. And, and, not, and not even consciously, but kind of unconsciously. So um, I just thought I'd put that out there today. Um, thanks very much for watching, and uh, see you again soon. Oh, and don't forget, please leave a like, leave a comment, and if you can, please subscribe. Thanks very much, guys.